Hi everyone, if you haven't watched the first part of this video, you can click here to see how to paint a breeze eye. And in this video, I will show you how I paint the skin tones after my breeze eye had time to dry. So let's start with my palette setup. You can check my videos on flesh tones for more information, uh, but for this demonstration, I thought it would be interesting to let you see how I prepare my colors. Uh, the colors I'm using right now are uh, Titanium White, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, Le Franc Red, Naphtal Red, uh, Burnt Umber, French Ultramarine Blue, and uh, Light Turquoise. As I mentioned in my previous color mixing video, you don't really have to get these specific colors. As long as you have a white, a uh, yellow, a blue, and a red, and a dark brown, you can choose whatever you like. There is no rule here, but I usually start with a small quantity of white, then add some of the more chromatic colors, and um, finally decrease the chroma by adding burnt umber and or uh, one of the blue colors. I use these blues to create a cool blue undertone, but I also use them to counterbalance the warmer red tones and decrease their chroma. You can see that the addition of red and blue makes the skin tones feel a little bit uh, purple. And some of you will notice that I use some colors I didn't mention in the previous video. Uh, that's because, of course, each painting is specific. And for this one, I wanted to keep a low chroma and make it relatively cool. Uh, the light is supposed to create the impression of twilight. Now, of course, you won't be able to see it for the moment because there is no background, but this is the idea at least. As you see, as I get darker, I use less white until there is none at all. At the end, my darkest color is just made of burnt umber and blue. 
this is what I use instead of black for this part of the painting. Okay, so let's start painting our first layer over the grisaille. Keeping in mind that I will not be demonstrating the complete painting, just the first and second layers after the grisaille. I try to follow the guidelines of my grisaille. So I start with my lightest and my darkest skin colors to see if they have the right value. I refer to my darkest color and compare the relation between the values around it. So I try to establish the darkest parts as soon as possible. Now I am starting the hair with a fairly large brush and trying to be as loose as possible, especially around the edges. The lightest part of the portrait have to be fairly opaque and thick. So the grisaille works really well here. If I didn't have a grisaille as an underpainting, my light colors would probably not be as strong with the same amount of paint because they would be sort of absorbed by the surface or polluted by other colors. But here it works well 
the white of the grease eye and the highlights of the flash colors support each other. Now I try to reproduce the painting of the grisaille, but I try to improve it at the same time. One could argue that painting the grisaille at first was sort of useless if I have to paint with opaque colors over it. But as I said in the first part of this video, the grisaille is here to help me just as a scaffolding helps in the construction of a building. This is the benefit of the indirect approach to painting. It takes more time, but you progress with more confidence. I think that if I had to remember one rule for indirect painting, it would be never be afraid to paint the same thing several times. Don't be afraid to paint over and over again, because each time it will be a little bit better. And if it's not, just paint over it one more time. Indirect painting is all about building successive layers of paint. So if you choose to paint this way, take advantage of it. Sure, indirect painting doesn't have the bold expressivity of a la prima painting, but at least it has the strength of all these hours the artist spent building up layers on top of each other. As you can see, the painting goes pretty fast. Remember that the grisaille under this layer is still visible, even though it doesn't feel like it. So I'm not painting a completely new thing. I use a large part of the grisaille to build the new layers. Some parts of the grisaille are almost left untouched. They create these cooler grayish undertones that recreates the effect of a faint light, which is exactly what I want. I use a few round sables for details, but I try to avoid to blend too much with them. As long as I feel that I can paint with a large hog bristle, I prefer to keep them.
it's a strange idea, but in order to paint realistic and natural looking hair, it's best to avoid to paint very fine separate hairs with a tiny brush. Take a big brush, as big as possible. Think about the overall movement of the locks of hair and the general feeling of the hair, and pay attention to values and to the effects of lights. Okay, so I'm not going to show you the entire process of this painting, but before the end of the video, I wanted to show you why layering is important, especially for highlights. So this is my painting and I give it a few days to dry. And now I will paint over it with opaque paint. It's just the same colors and uh, exactly the same mixes. Can you see the difference? This is because the first time I painted with my skin colors, I had to blend my lightest colors to the surrounding colors. And by doing that, I polluted them just a little bit, not much, but enough to feel the difference between before and after. And also because by making the layer more opaque, I'm making the highlight stand out more. And of course, doing several layers is a good way to make corrections, uh, little by little. In fact, I said that you can paint the same thing over and over, but it's not really true. You paint several layers, but every time you paint less, because a lot is already done, and the numbers of things to change decrease after each layer. Right here, I'm painting less, and I'm using less paint than the first time. I use all these layers I did before to my advantage. I just need to add a few brush strokes here and there. And because it's not a lot of work anymore, I can really focus on making my painting look exactly as I want now. Okay, I hope you got the idea behind this short demonstration. This painting will obviously need a lot more work. Keep in mind that you don't have to paint this way, and that this is just one way among others. This is just what I do, but hopefully you got something out of it. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe. As always, don't hesitate to leave comments if you have questions, or if you want to share with the rest of the viewers. Hope to see you for more videos and have fun painting. Bye.